one can add to the brightness of the noonday sun, so no words can increase the glory of the immortal Washington. First in war, first in peace, first in the hearts of his countrymen. His fame will shine with undiminished splendor through all the coming ages. Under the smiles of beneficent heaven, he was the creator and savior of the greatest nation in the history of the world. Ah, if there had been such an instrument as this in the days that tried men's souls, to record the words as they fell from the lips of the peerless leader of our army in the revolution, our first and foremost president, and the unequaled statesman, with what bated breath and awed hearts, we should accept the treasures from that storehouse of exalted patriotism and matchless wisdom. But since that cannot be, let us ponder upon the closing sentences of his farewell, when bowed by the burden of years, he laid aside the robes of office, and like the humblest citizen of the young republic, wended his way to his beloved Mount Vernon, soon to sink into the tomb, amid the grief of his countrymen, and the reverent admiration of the civilized world. In offering to you, my countrymen, these counsels of an old and affectionate friend, I dare not hope they will make the strong and lasting impression I could wish, that they will control the usual current of the passions, or prevent our nation from running the course which has hitherto marked the destiny of nations. But if I may even flatter myself that they may be productive of some partial benefit, some occasional good, that they may now and then recur to moderate the fury of party spirit, to warn against the mischiefs of foreign intrigue, to guard against the impostures of pretended patriotism, this hope will be a full recompense for the solicitude for your welfare by which they have been dictated. Though in reviewing the incidents of my administration, I am unconscious of intentional error, I am nevertheless too sensible of my defects not to think it probable that I may have committed many errors. Whatever they may be, I fervently beseech the Almighty to avert or mitigate the evils to which they may tend. I shall also carry with me the hope that my country will never cease to view them with indulgence and that after 45 years of my life dedicated to its service with an upright zeal, the faults of incompetent abilities will be consigned to oblivion, as myself must soon be to the mansions of rest. Relying on its kindness in this, as in other things, and actuated by that fervent love toward it, which is so natural to a man who views in it the native soil of himself and his progenitors for several generations, I anticipate with pleasing expectation that retreat in which I promise myself to realize without alloy the sweet enjoyment of partaking in the midst of my fellow citizens the benign influence of good laws under a free government, the ever favorite object of my heart, and the happy reward, as I trust, of our mutual cares, labors, and dangers.